afternoon. My name's Elizabeth Galton. I'm 28 year years old. I'm looking for um, £110,000 investment with 20% equity. I'm a fashion jeweller with an established reputation for making couture jewellery. I've won major awards from the British Crafts Council and the Worshipful Goldsmiths Company, and I've exhibited at the Victorian Albert Museum and at galleries across Europe and New York. I have, my work has been featured in the Sunday Times, the Financial Times, Mayfair Life and Esquire magazine. And um, I also work as a fashion assistant to the jewellery editor at Harper's and Queen. And I lecture at Central St Martins and the, um, the London College of Fashion. And I'm an ex-Royal College, uh, College of Art graduate myself. I am aiming uh, to create couture look design that's highly distinctive with impeccable quality but at off the peg prices. The kind of product that's only currently available at the very high end of the market and is available to only very few consumers. And in conclusion, I have letters from uh, top individuals and organisations in or connected to the industry expressing strong support for my objectives. Thank you. Elizabeth Galton is looking for £110,000 and is prepared to give away 20% of her innovative jewellery business. Can I have a look at some of the things that you've brought? Is it possible to just give me a couple of things? This one's got two sections. And how would one wear this, um, Elizabeth? It just sits around the neck and the orchid sits in the middle. And it, it would be yeah, that's it. primarily for women, though? Yes, yeah. I mean, they're, they're, these big pieces are... I have one lady who's... Um, she's an investment banker. She's uh, used to work for the 3i group. She loves flamboyant jewellery. She's in her 50s. She loves wearing pieces that she goes to a cocktail party and all her friends go, my God, what on earth have you got around your neck? You're looking at me absolutely normally, like I'm the most normal man <laughs> in the world. And, I, and I'm struggling to realise where this could the, the, go. Again, this piece I'm actually worried to ask you. Could you just brooch. take it back? Yeah. Thank you. Actually, I think that suits. Yeah, this one. Like, Very few good. things do, actually. Um, I have to admit, it's, this is quite a surreal experience because in the time I'm completely diverted by this bug on your chest, which, uh, you <laughs> know, so it's, it's, I'm sorry? <laughs> the cockroach. Oh, don't worry, um, I've had cellos, I've I'm had. I'm confident anything I say will be mild by comparison. But I think. Well, we need to focus on is the product I'm looking to launch are smaller scale versions of these. Okay. Elizabeth's designs have got the dragon's attention, but they don't seem to have grasped so far that the jewellery she's brought with her wouldn't be the actual pieces she wanted to get into the shops. So what you're saying is, Elizabeth, these are these are not things that you would ever envisage going out. This is the catwalk. I wore this to New see. York Fashion Week last uh, on September. Okay, 8th. so yes, yeah. but but, you, but, but the, the, the idea is that these units are much smaller in real yes, size. Yes, yeah. yeah, this is for press oh. fashion designers. It, you know, obviously it has a huge novelty kind of factor for the press. They love it. They get really excited by it. You know, so they get the press coverage, and obviously that helps with the the ready to wear collections. What are your expectations to? numbers that you're going to sell have you right. got some first year figures that you yes, think that you're going to yes, do some revenue yeah. figures yes can you give me those yeah um my markup is 450 percent as i said the um the margins in jewelry are excellent um so it's 450 percent is my markup in year two the products will be manufactured in china which will mean that my markup will actually be 700 will increase to 700 percent um, when I sell the product direct at trade, sh uh, trade shows, my markup will be 1,482%, which is a fantastic markup, and that's direct into my pocket. Elizabeth claims she can make extraordinary amounts of money from the jewellery she sells, so investing in her could be extremely lucrative for the dragons. But can she prove to them she's got what it takes to run a successful business? My biggest challenge here is the... Is the is, is, this, is the gap between what you do today, mm. which is intended to be provocative and on the edge, mm. and what you seek mm. to do, yeah. which is intended to reach a mainstream audience, yeah. admittedly led from a promotional yeah. point of view yeah. by your couture work. Mm. And this is where, to me, you've got the biggest risk. Right. Have you been able to present I, yourself to yeah. the distribution channels? Yes, You're yes. eager to tell me the answers, so go ahead. <laughs> um, Jess James is probably, one, well, is, the top uh, independent gallery in um, in London. They are desperate to have uh, a ready-to-wear collection from me, 
and they've already said that they will take it as soon as I have the product. Um, I did all eight windows of Harvey Nichols um, recently, um, an installation for them. They're very, very keen on the product. Um, I went out for New York Fashion Week and talked to Fragments in New York again. They're one of the leading contemporary jewellery galleries. Um, another one in New York, Fash Binder, very, very keen on the work. Um, but all, all of them want the product and at the moment, I, obviously, I don't have the product to give them, you know, t you know, to get it into the shops. But I've talked to uh, Liberties. I did an installation for them when they launched their new contemporary accessories gallery. Their buyers very, very keen to take my my ready-to-wear collection. So I have talked to a lot of people. Um, it's just at the moment I can't deliver the, the actual product to them. But to do that, you have got to be a businesswoman. Yes. You've got to be a full-on yeah. businesswoman. Yeah. And uh, from what I'm getting from you right now, you're not a businesswoman. Right. You're a designer who's got a, think, who's got a I, good bit of front. I think having been out of the RCA for four years, I would have sunk without a trace had I not. You know, I've already made sales. My last commission last month was to Swarovski for this catwalk piece for, for New York Fashion Week. I don't think I would have been able to negotiate the deal that I did with them if I didn't have a certain amount of business acumen. Elizabeth's got the answers the dragons are looking for. She's clearly a designer in demand with an impressive list of potential clients. But none of the dragons have offered her any of the £110,000 she's looking for yet. Duncan Bannatyne wants to know more about the press coverage she's had. You just said yeah. you were in the Financial Times and you mentioned other papers. Yeah. Were you really in the Financial Times or were you in the magazine supplement? I was in the How to Spend It yeah, supplement. That's the, how to spend that's, it. The supplement. that's the Squire magazine. That was part of Mercedes-Benz ad campaign for the Mercedes C-Class. Um, and they basically, Mercedes commissioned me straight out of college. I don't know why they didn't show me this one to begin with. That's much better. <laughs> that's a fantastic write-up. Okay. Elizabeth, can I just ask you, yes. from this How to Spend It article, mm. Did you sell any of these I as did, a result? Yes. How many? Yeah, the couture pieces. I sold five couture pieces. From this one article yes, alone? Yes, yeah. For how much? Uh, they wholesale at £1,200 and they retail at £6,000. Did you sell them? So, did you sell them to wholesalers? No, I sold them to private clients. For £6,000 each? Yes. So, you sold yeah. five? So, you made yes. £30,000 from this yes, piece just on the back of the PR. FD, yeah. Wow, that's amazing. Yeah. yeah. It's an important breakthrough for Elizabeth. Rachel Elnor is hugely impressed she's already sold five pieces of jewellery for £6,000 from one magazine feature. Elizabeth's looking for £110,000 and Duncan Bannatyne is keen to start talking figures. I, I like you and I like the product and, and I'm willing to invest, but we've got to clarify the deal mm -hmm. and the offer I'm going to make for you. Right. The company would own the rights to your name mm -hmm. if I invested in the company. Now, we can put an out clause in that that allows you to get out at some time in the future, nice. but you wouldn't get out for nothing. Right. It, it, there would be a cost implication yeah. to it. And the percentage is too low. Mm. I'd be willing to pop half the money. You're asking for 110,000. I'd be willing to pop 55,000 right. for 15 percent of your company now, right. today. Mm. Duncan Bannatyne is ready to offer half the 110,000 pounds Elizabeth is looking for, but he wants 15 percent of her business. She only wants to sell 20 percent in total. The Dragons realise they're looking at an impressive designer with a potentially lucrative career ahead of her but she needs one or more other dragons to join the deal. It appears Elizabeth can't rely on Peter Jones's support. It would be very, very wrong of me to sit here and actually understand and think that this is an investment for me. This is, this is something that maybe I'm going to see in Hello magazine and maybe I'll see nicely on Esquire. <laughs> and I'm, I might kick myself, but I might not. But it's not an investment that actually I personally think that I'm going to add any value to it and I don't portray that I'm going to really get into it to such an extent that I have got the time to go and sit and watch beautiful ladies on the catwalk and unfortunately my life's just not like that. So I don't think that you would benefit from having me with you as a partnership um, or me in the business. And for those reasons, those reasons only, because I think you're a fantastic person, I think you've been brilliantly today, I'm not going to invest. Peter Jones is out and Simon Woodruff is not far behind. I love the outrageousness of it. Mm. I'm not, and I like a bit of fashion as well. Jewelry, I've never really got, to tell you the truth, right. deep down. And when I really come down to it, do I want to have a jewelry business? I don't. Okay. So I'm not in and All I'm right. not an investor. We're down to three. <laughs> I don't know anything about this. It's pure risk for a techie. I, <laughs> I have huge admiration for you. 
But it is silly for me to pretend I can't add the value to this that I could to others. Peter Jones, Simon Woodruff and Doug Richard have all told Elizabeth they won't be contributing to the £110,000 she's trying to raise in the Dragon's Den. So can she tempt Rachel Elnor to come up with the extra £55,000 to add to Duncan Bannatyne's offer? Do you know something, Elizabeth? I'd be interested in, in putting in 55k for 15%. My big problem would actually be doing an investment with Duncan. Because I just think that the three of us in business together would be like three sticks of dynamite. Right. Which would, would have the potential to explode at any moment. And the whole business would just go poof. Whether Elizabeth succeeds or fails in the Dragon's Den depends on whether Rachel Elnor's prepared to work with Duncan Bannatyne. They're the only two dragons left. I've made my position clear. Okay. I've, I, I've right. offered you 55,000 right. for 15%. Um, and if you can get a second dragon to come yeah. in with 55,000 right. to join me, then you'll have your 110. Hmm. And I'll work with any dragon. I've said right. that. Right. My position has been made very clear. I guess the final, the final call goes to you, then I very much hope that you will say yes. Will Rachel finally commit to Elizabeth's business and put in the rest of the £110,000 she needs? I would put in 55000 for 15%, mm. and the company that we're investing in mm. would own the rights to the Elizabeth Galton brand. Mm. OK, that's, what, yeah. that's the deal. Right. My first question would be, 30% seems a lot to me. I don't know whether we could get that down to I think it's non-negotiable. Non OK, fair enough. There's an offer on the table for Elizabeth, but it's not the one she came for. Rachel Elnor and Duncan Bannatyne are prepared to offer her £110,000, but they want 30% of her business. Elizabeth only wanted to give away 20%. Will she hold out for a better deal? So you're happy with that? Well, I think if the 30% the is non-negotiable, then yes, I'm, I'd be happy with it. Well done, Elizabeth. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. Well done. This is going to be interesting. Elizabeth's done it. She's walking away with the £110,000 she came for and is giving up 30% of her business to Rachel Elnor and Duncan Bannatyne. Bye. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Guys, I want to say just, I think, well done. Yeah. I, I think she is a cracking... Oh, thank you, Peter. Person. She was great. I, that I, means a lot coming I from I think you. that would be a great investment. I think Rachel would follow her skills well. I think it would be a great investment for you because you'll get to every single catwalk, and I know that was the strategy behind it at first. <laughs> <laughs> you'll be at every single... Fr business. You'll be there on the first stand looking up at all these... You it's worth 55,000 to you of anybody's money, but for Rachel, great uh, business. Have a spare ticket. Do you want to come? Yes. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> Elizabeth, very, very well done. A brilliant pitch, has to be said. You really disarmed them with your charm. Are you uh, happy with the outcome? I'm very, very happy. It's, um, I think if I hadn't got the investment, obviously I would have carried on. I'm very passionate and I, I know I would have made it in the end, but this, this is really wonderful and it means I can move forward a lot quicker with things. So. Now, you were a brilliant businesswoman in there. You absolutely, obviously, <laughs> would mastered the business. However, I didn't, wasn't impressed by your negotiating. When it came to the argument over equity, Yes, they said 30%. Yeah. You well, asked if they would negotiate, <laughs> and that was the end of I'll it. I let you into a little secret. On, on the equity front, I would have kind of, I think, at the end of the day, gone along with, with what they were, were prepared to offer because I, I really need to move forward quickly with the product now. So um, I knew that wasn't going to be. I wasn't you couldn't fight. take it. No, you I couldn't, couldn't take, take it. I, you know, I'd already kind of put up quite a fight, I think, and I think that would have just been a little too much. Very, very Thank good luck. You. Well done, Thanks. Elizabeth.